the mission of the Hawthorne Army Depot covers a lot of territory. What we do is we store ammunition here for JMC, and that's our main mission. We have 7.6 million square feet inside storage space for explosives here. We have about 350,000 short tons of conventional ammunition stored here. We also have about 5,000 short tons of mercury stored on the depot. There's 14 buildings that we retrofitted to house mercury. It's pretty much forever storage here. And another thing is I think the security of it here in one location instead of spread throughout the east down coast area. Storage is the mainstay of the Hawthorne Army Depot mission, but the demilitarization and disposal of obsolete and surplus ammunition is an increasingly important task. We demil items uh, from 750 pound bombs to 8 inch projectiles down to as small as primers and fuses and 20 millimeters. You know, so we have a large uh, capability here. From maintaining self-sustaining water treatment plants to protecting wildlife, environmental preservation is an important part of the mission. We have a, a great environmental department. We are ISO 14000 certified, which is an environmental program. The depot also contains ammunition testing facilities. The Hawthorne Army Depot maintains superb working partnerships with a variety of other agencies. At the Hawthorne Army Depot, the opportunities to excel at providing vital services are as far-reaching as the high desert itself.
here's a great landmark at the Lucy Gray Mines, this old truck. There's the back end of it. There's a side shot. Oh, look at that. The mirror's still there. Thought that would have been shot out by now. It's a nice looking truck though, nice color after all these years. Okay, it's just about sunset here and uh, I'm hiking up this uh, old mining road up this canyon here and I keep on going almost to the what I think are the main adits for the Lucy Gray mine. Now down below as I hiked up here I passed an inclined shaft that had been reclaimed with a, a bat gate and a culvert so I'm not sure if our good friends at the BLM have already gotten to these mines and put gates in them. Something tells me that's going to be the case when I get up here. The mine is right up there. You can see the tailings right in the center of the frame there. And uh, supposed to be a couple uh, adits, and uh, so we're almost there. And I'll keep going up the road here, and we'll check it out when I get up there. Okay, made it to the mine entrance, and uh, here's part of the, I guess, an ore bin head frame. Yeah, I believe this was the head frame. And this is probably a vertical shaft. There's the uh, hoisting wheel. And uh, looks like they sealed up what would have been the uh, double compartment shaft. Oh yeah, you can see way down there. Um, let me zoom in there. Yeah, it's timbered all the way down. It, it goes down even past where, that, where the ladder is, I can see. Oh, here we go. Much better shot here. Okay, that's looking down the, uh, this would have been the side the ore cart came up on. And Okay, on the side of the cabin here is, uh, it says, uh, Lucy Gray Mining Company, Incorporated Nevada, 1908. So these mines are, uh, over a century old, and, uh, this was the mining camp. There's a shot looking back down the, uh, down the, uh, canyon at sunset. Could be water at the bottom of the shaft, which presents the possibility of a drowning happening. Even if you survive the fall, you may not be able to get out of the water at the bottom of a shaft. If you have a horizontal drift or at it, that's partially flooded, it could hide a deep hole in the floor. So you could be walking along in relatively shallow water and all of a sudden find yourself in water up to your neck and unable to get out. You have to assume that they're not, they're not at all usable. Uh, and if you go down a ladder it may be the upper part of the ladder is pretty good and you get down 30 or 40 feet and then all of a sudden the steps start breaking out from underneath of you. Or you get down to the bottom and then you try to come back out and the steps start breaking as you try to go up and you can't get back out. 
uh, again, from a safety standpoint, uh, you never trust ladders and you surely don't trust ropes because if they've been sitting for any length of time, they're just not reliable. Well, they didn't protect those winds as oftentimes. Somebody walks in an abandoned mine, they're typically looking up at the back or the rib. Most of the deaths that we have in abandoned mines are from people walking in, looking at the back or the rib, and falling to their death down a wind. This is about as near as we can come to the, to the underground hazard presented by winds. This is the intersection of a little cross cut and an old shaft. Nothing to indicate that this drop off is here. You were going along there looking at the light, looking at that face, and we're paying attention. You'd be 30 feet down there in that water. The structures themselves can be hazards. That have been sitting out in the weather for many decades. You can be climbing around on some of the collapsed head frames. Um, the wood can be rotten. You can climb around on some of the frames around the mines themselves and they can look very secure but they can collapse at any time. These decay and become weaker over time, could collapse under the additional weight of a person attempting to climb onto these structures. Well, there's a risk any time you're around an abandoned mine, such as roof collapsing on you, because they used dynamite and that cracked the rock. And the miners put a post to hold that roof up, but over the time that the mine is abandoned, those posts tend to rot and that roof will fall down someday and kill whoever's underneath it if it's a human being or whether it's a chipmunk. Bad air cannot be detected by human senses in many instances. Many poisonous gases cannot be smelled. First symptoms of oxygen deprivation is you lose your common sense. And by the time that somebody would be aware that something is wrong, you pass out, your head goes right down into very low oxygen, and you're dead. A lot of deaths in abandoned mines happen because of low oxygen situation. Nitroglycerin is a very unstable compound. As dynamite ages, the nitroglycerin tends to come out of the filler material and to collect in pools underneath the dynamite box. And so disturbing this pile of dynamite could lead to an explosion. There's something you don't like to find. There's a whole box of old dynamite. Judging from the cardboard container, I'd guess that was from the 1950s. Good possibility that that dynamite is still highly explosive. Very, very dangerous underground hazard. That's something you don't want to fool with. There certainly are explosives uh, that you can run across. The ones that actually scare me the worst are the ones that you can't see, and those are the blasting caps, which are little thin cylinders and if you don't know what they are and you step on one, it might very well go off. A blasting cap an inch and a half long and a quarter of an inch in diameter is enough to blow your hand completely off. There are people that go on abandoned mines that don't, that don't have any knowledge about old explosives would pick up a blasting cap as a curiosity item, perhaps drop it in a pocket and wind up with serious injury or death. That's happened a lot of times. <laughs> Probably the most insidious danger in mines, old abandoned mines, are uh, simply running into poisonous snakes. And down in this country, of course, it's always rattlesnakes. Uh, in the summertime in particular, as it gets really hot and the snakes get uncomfortable, they'll move into shaded areas, uh, which can be tunnels or, or small holes in the ground that, uh, that are on the mining sites. And so 
if you're not paying attention as you go into a tunnel or you're going into some sort of an open mining feature, but one that has shade in it, the next thing you'll know you can get into poisonous snakes. So that snakes are always an issue uh, anywhere around mining sites. Well, getting lost is a possibility. Light is a critical thing. Simple tasks like moving 25 feet become incredibly complex. Now, oftentimes what will happen is when you lose light underground, you panic. Lots of the deaths that have happened have been for that reason. People have been underground. They've lost their light. The tendency is to panic. They run, run into something or run and fall down something. Definite possibility there. Even the most highly trained and cautious are exposed to life-threatening risk by the multiple hazards one could encounter in an abandoned mine. The men that are involved in work uh, around uh, hazardous mine openings are extensively trained, and th this is not something that uh, you'd want to do without the appropriate training and without the appropriate safety equipment. Uh, entering mine workings and working on uh, mine closings can be extremely hazardous. Now I've got a hard hat on. And that hard hat would protect me from a rock about that size if it fell maybe 10 feet. If that falls 200 feet, it's going to go through that hard hat with a sickening crunch. If a rock this size falls, the hard hat's not going to make any difference. That rock is going to break my neck. It behooves all of us to identify these structures and to safeguard them and to return these lands to some kind of a useful, self-sustaining uh, facility. The abandoned mine land program utilizes a variety of techniques to close and safeguard abandoned mines. These techniques include backfilling, polyurethane foam or puff, wildlife compatible closures, cable nets, and other structural closures. Backfilling with surrounding waste rock or other. Mines are dug to follow an externally visible vein of valuable ore into a formation. An adit is a horizontal mine entry. The opening to an adit is referred to as a portal. An adit can become a tunnel if it is open at both ends. The top of an adit is referred to as the back and the sides are referred to as the ribs. Miners often dug directly down to follow a vein. A shaft is a vertical mine feature. The opening to a shaft is referred to as a collar. A sump can be described as a continuation of a shaft, specifically dug to protect other parts of the mine from flooding. Consider a sump a collection cup for excess rain or groundwater. Drifts are horizontal underground mine passages dug off a shaft to follow the vein in an attempt to mine as much valuable ore as possible. A winds is a shaft dug within an adit or drift to explore the lower level of ground for ore below the original vein. If an adit or drift is successful in following a vein to a large ore body, a stope will be made by removing all the available ore. The resulting stope can resemble a cavern. Larger stopes are often referred to as ballrooms. If a stope reaches the surface, it is referred to as an open stope. People seem to be fascinated by those and they want to get up and look down on them or throw something down on them. And should they slip and fall in it, there's, it's going to be a disaster. I've got I was back there riding and uh, just checking pastures and checking the cattle and, and darn, you know, you just ride up on a ridge and, and all of a sudden there's a mine. It just surprised me because it was, it was there. I thought I knew where every mine on this place was, but I was wrong. Yeah. It can be traps for the unwary and the unprepared. And for anyone who really does not fully understand what the hazards of abandoned mines, and that includes all of us. Traditioners are real. What we estimate to be 15,000 mine hazards across the state are from that period prior to later in the 20th century when reclamation laws came into effect. And these are shafts, adits, various ways to get into the ground, either horizontal or vertical, that are left open today and that could pose a danger to the public. Well, my son fell down a mine when he was 18 and died. It's very heartbreaking to have a tragedy like this happen 
to anyone. I'm wanting to get them all closed and I want to be able to save somebody else's life. I miss him so much. Please excuse me. This has been the most painful thing I've ever had to go through my whole entire life. The pain that I feel every single day because of my son's death and it was because of these abandoned mines that he knew nothing about. We need to educate all of our people on these, the parents, the children, the teenagers that don't know. People need to be aware that these mines are dangerous, that anything can happen when they walk into them. Also begins to see why the best policy is to stay out and stay alive. Person approaches the edge of the shaft opening. There's some really dangerous openings. Arab, Allah, 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 Allah,